guys, how are we all? Hope we're all doing well, picking some locks and keeping it bloody legal. And welcome to the Sunday Beginner Series, where each and every Sunday I cover topics to help beginners build a great foundation into this awesome, awesome sport known as lock sport, which is lock picking. Now, to start off with, I'm going to cover today's topic, and then right at the end, I'm going to show you something. But before I do all that, uh, the last bit is in... Uh, relation to Keyless Entry, uh, an awesome Australian channel. We were having a chat the other night and over a video he did. But to begin with, Keyless, you did not show a knife. That wasn't a knife. This is a knife. All right, you got me. I see you played Knife Your you before. That is actually a thing from The Simpsons if you don't get the reference. <laughs> All right, so today's topic for the Sunday Beginner Series is shimming so it is a easy bypass method of a lot of padlocks and i've got a few different types of padlocks here one of them can be shimmed quite easily the others are ways that lock manufacturers have designed locks so that they can be can't be defeated by a simple little padlock shim so I have a packet of padlock shims just here. These are the Sparrows ones, and I did do a review of these, so go check out Wednesday's video of the uh, Sparrows padlock shims if you want to know what these are like. I did do a full video on these. So this is one of the most basic methods of bypassing when it comes to a lot of your cheaper padlocks and you can see I've been using these quite a bit or the same two I should say because they are quite dinged and bent up but they still work and I've been using these a hell of a lot so when it comes to using padlock shims as a method of bypass they only work on certain locks and it would be locks that use a locking pull like the ones that this shackle uses so we have a notch an angled notch cut out onto these which a locking pull which this is a part of one sits into inside the body of the lock sits in there like that and there's one on either side and it has a spring that sits in that little channel in the middle there pushing them out so they sit into there allowing that shackle to be locked into place. When you turn the key and you pull these locking pulls into position back into the body of the lock, that's when the shackle then springs up and you get note and your lock is open. But padlock shims are a simple method to bypass the whole inside workings of the lock, as in the core and all the pins and springs inside of there. You are bypassing all them and you're just tacking the spring-loaded locking pull that sits right in the middle of your lock. And how that works is you take your padlock shim and you've got a locking pull that sits into the cutout like that. You take one of your padlock shims, put it on your shackle, you work it down between the shackle and the body of the lock. I'm trying to hold this so that you get it into this position here like that between the, sh the uh, shackle and the locking pull which then pushes it into the middle of the lock which allows you then to lift up on the shackle and get an open how that works in practice well I have a lock here that is able to be the uh, shims are able to be used on and if you have a look there are two gaps between the shackle and the body of the lock or the uh, cutouts for the shackle. Now, the top, better the tolerance is, the tighter that cap is, but this one is a cheap lock, and it has some pretty, pa really bad tolerances. So we have a nice big gap on one side, and a nice big gap on the other, but one is slightly bigger than the other one, which means that the one that is slightly bigger, I'm going to tack last. I'm going to take my shim, and I'm going to slide him down between the shackle and the 
body of the lock and I'm going to work him and if you listen carefully you can probably hear him push that locking pull out the way like that and you can feel him sink into position so now he is sitting and covering that gap where the uh, locking pull sits so I've now just pushed this locking pull back into the body of the lock because I attacked the smaller side first the smaller gap I still have a nice size gap to be able to fit the other shim in on this side and again I'm going to gently work him down between the body and the shackle and push the other locking pull back in which then allows the lock to open like that so now it's open take that shim out and that one so pretty much all I've done just put a shim in and pushed these two locking pulls which are spring loaded like this back into the body of the lock very very easy method to bypass locks but as I was saying lock manufacturers have come up with ways to defeat us from using these methods one of them is on a master lock 150 with a hexagonal shackle cannot get a shim a rounded shim into a hexagonal shackle it just does not fit because uh, you can't get something round into nice tight square edges like this so that's one way they just come up with to our uh, beaters the other one a master lock number three like this one this has square cutouts into it so instead of having the angled locking pulls which are a lot easier this one has a square notch that comes and sticks out into the shackle i have tried to shim this and i cannot get the locking pull to push back into the body of the lock it is quite difficult to do not saying it can't be done i just find it very very difficult and i don't see the point in trying to shim one of these when it only takes you two seconds with a windshield wiper insert and a tensioner to get one of these open so it's actually quicker to pick one of these than to shim it and the other and last method is that they've used to defeat these are using ball bearing locking systems like the one in this you cannot shim the ball bearing locking systems because of the way that they have been designed you can't get the shim to push and go around the uh, ball bearing so you know simple little changes to locks that they've done to prevent a very very easy method of bypassing so that is this Sunday's Sunday Beginner Series video on by bypassing. And let me quickly pause this. I'll clean this up and we'll go on to the other part, which I was going to, I thought I'd show Keyless Entry and a few of the others that were I was talking to on Discord about. So uh, one second. All right. So as you know, I am a qualified chef. I don't work as a chef anymore. I changed careers, but I'm a fully qualified chef, which means that I did an apprenticeship and I went to uni and studied and graduated and got a certificate three in commercial cookery, which is, or hospitality in commercial cookery, which means that I'm a qualified chef. And being a chef, I used to work with knives all day, every day. And I absolutely love knives, always have and always will. And being a chef, you know, working with knives, I kind of got a passion for collecting knives. Um, and I've always had an interest in knives, but, you know, working as a chef and all the beautiful chef's knives and stuff kind of got me into it. And this here is my chef's knife. Uh, it's a bit watermarked at the moment because I just went and washed it and cause I've been using it, gave it a quick dry and it's kind of dried on not polished up but this is if you can see it's a bit old now a whooshed off icon this is a classic german made very very high quality uh 300 chef's knife but this is actually a one of a kind now um 
I got a new handle put on it. So a mate of mine here in Australia who is a knife maker, he work, makes beautiful works of art, all hand-forged and folded Damascus steel, makes it all by hand. Absolutely fantastic quality workmanship. Uh, I got him to put a new handle on this, so it is actually one of a kind. There is not one other knife like this around. And have a look at the handle I got put on this. A beautiful purple, silver and black marble swirled handle. Absolutely gorgeous. So you put this one on there for me. And uh, this thing is razor sharp. But, you know, beautiful, beautiful knife. Kind of started everything off. Bought this when I started my apprenticeship and I've had it ever since, and it is still sharp today. This knife actually nearly sent me to hospital. <laughs> um, I was running over the steel before service one night. It bounced off my steel, went down through the side of my knuckle, which I still have the scar from. It's actually healed up a lot more. The scar was a lot bigger. Went down through the side of my finger, through the knuckle, and this faint little bloodline come up. Went like that, pulled the skin under my finger, and you could see all the knuckle cartilage and the bone either side. I had a heap of band-aids, glove, tape it up. It was all good. Didn't get stitches like I should have, but that kind of started it off. Then my wife bought me my first collector's knife, which was this one here, a dragon blade. Has a UV print on the blade here with the dragon. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, tail on the end there. Nice little dragon head on here. Uh, beautiful, awesome little knife. It is stainless steel. But that kind of started off. That is the display one. And then, you know, it just grew from there. Uh, knives that I actually use quite often... I got my tactical survival knife here, which is actually in my bag for fire season. So I do care for each one of my knives and sharpen these. Uh, I've got a few here that I've got out now because they need to be re-oiled, um, cleaned up and re-oiled. I do it quite often. Not as often as I should, but um, this thing is bloody sharp as all buggery. And... For those of you that were wondering, yes, this is a proper survival knife. Have a compass in the end here that points north, as it should. And then I've got fishing hooks. This come in it. It's got fishing hooks, lines, sinkers, matches, match paper, band aids, uh, safety pins, pencil, you know, cotton, sewing needles, everything you need, all in there. But I use this quite often around the farm here. It's always handy to have a nice, big, sharp knife on you. So, uh, that one there. So, keyless. That is a knife. As you can see by the size, it is nearly 40 centimetres from the handle, end of the handle, to the tip of the actual sheath here. But the blade comes right down to the end. <coughs> For those of you that like throwing knives like I do... Now I have a set of scorpion throwing knives here. These are beautiful, perfectly balanced. These are 440 blackened stainless steel. Uh, so very, very, very strong steel. Uh, normally throwing knives just have the tips sharpened. I don't. I'm actually getting trying to get a sheath made up for these uh, so I can carry them. Because they work well as a normal knife as well as a throwing knife. But perfectly balanced. Which, if I can get it to sit on my finger, I've got a bit of the shakes at the moment. But perfectly balanced like that. Just what you want to see in a uh, throwing knife. So, got these when I was over in Adelaide. Uh, absolutely love these things. They are pretty, pretty cool. Got a nice big knife just here. Another collector's one. I like it because it has a skull, a skull and a snake on the handle there. It's a nice pattern work to it. Uh, this isn't Damascus. It's stainless steel. It's designed to look like Damascus, but it's actually just chemical etching 
that they've put on it to make it look like Damascus. But beautiful display knife. Um, it looks really nice when it's actually on its stand sitting on show. Same as this little blade just here. Another display one. Chemical etched. Uh, but beautiful little knife. You know, for display knives, these look really, really nice. And they are quite a talking point. So I always have these sitting out. So these ones I've been cleaned up. A couple of these other ones need to be cleaned and oiled. Have a spider blade. Just here, so nice stainless knife. Does have a spider built in, half stuck into a resin handle, the spider web. Does need a clean up. It did get wet during when I moved house, and I haven't had a chance to, you know, clean these up a bit. But awesome little blade, super super sharp. So. You know, being a knife collector and people that do like knives, I was talking to Shua um, and showed him these, sent him photos of them. I got photos of them up on Instagram um, and all that. Just a hobby, another hobby I have is collecting knives. Uh, any knife, I love it. But these aren't cheap. <laughs> I can tell you that now. Uh, got another one in a case here so we've got some moose did snap this case when we moved house fortunately again a chemically etched blade nice little moose on the handle here nice wide handle beautiful beautiful work uh, again nice sharp blade to it but you know I don't use this this is display item if you wanted to use it you can but I like these for display purposes only. They are stainless steel. They all they have this has a working edge, but I don't like to do that. I like to just have them on display. Now, why damage something that is so beautiful? And it really is a collector's item. I have knives that I play and work with, like the tactical and the scorpions and my chef's knife. But you know, some are just too pretty to uh, damage. Got a little eagle knife, little hand painted blade, or painted on picture on the blade. Beautiful little thing. Oh, it might not actually be painted. I haven't really had a full on look. Uh, again, working edge. You can use this if you want. I think it's like a sticker kind of thing stuck over a little print on the blade, but. Again, I like it. Beautiful. Display purpose only. And let's quickly finish this up. Otherwise, this is going to be a very long video. Got an eagle knife here with a ivory wannabe. It's actually a resin imprinted handle, or well, resin handle, which is all carved out. And... Beautiful eagle background all etched or actually engraved into the steel. Again, working edge stainless steel blade. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, another talking piece and a display knife. Actually has a hell of a lot of weight to it, this one. But, you know, I am a collector and a user of knives. And lastly, one that I'm going to show, otherwise it's going to be a half hour long video. Nice little Indian feather knife, little flick knife. This thing is gorgeous. Very simple in its design, but it is beautiful. I just like the style of it, the nice little curve and the way it all sits. And it flicks out like that. This one, as you can see, needs to be cleaned up. And oiled again. It's got a bit of water marking on it. They got wet. But again, sharp blade. But I don't use it. It is a display item. So, ego keyless.
that's my knife collection and the others that we're talking about we were talking about knives and stuff like that uh sure i said i'd go through them a while back i just haven't had a chance to get them all on camera but a little bit of a collection they're not all my work knives i have more around and stuff like that but these are just my pride and joys um few i use all the time and the rest of the you know display items but as always always follow the kids keep locks for you winner don't go do anything stupid don't forget down the bottom is that little subscribe button right next to it little bell icon you've got to hit both of them the way youtube's running everything now that way you can stay up to date as soon as i upload a video you'll be one of the first to know you know i try to upload two to three to four videos per week with anyone working everything else that i've got going on don't forget to come and join us on discord extremely league of pickers the links in the description so click that description go down to the link and come and join us you'll not be disappointed we talk a lot of stuff knives um you know locks anything everything it's all on discord don't forget you also find dark arts lock pig on instagram facebook and twitter where i'll put up post photos what's going on in the background all the fun stuff that happens around here pretty much uh as i was saying you know photos up of these on there for, that was a long time ago i put them up but it's all on there uh, if you're looking for great equipment at very competitive prices, please check out locksmithtoolbox.com. They're an awesome Australian company, and as you know, that's where I get all my lockpicking equipment from. If you'd like to get in contact with me, contact me through any social media, Discord, or send us an email at darkhourslockpicking at gmail.com, and I'll get back to you. If you like what you see, please give a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. Uh, let us know if you have a knife collection, what, else, what do you use collect other than locksport stuff. And until next time, cheers, guys.